Aloha gang, so in today's video we'll be going over how to write a hit song. I'll be covering the three main elements to write a catchy hit song. Most of this information comes from one of my biggest producer inspirations, Max Martin. If you don't know who he is, then you can just leave. No, seriously man, Ser seriously get out man, get out! I was just joking with you guys. I'm glad you're here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Alex. So all jokes aside, even if you think you don't know Max Martin, you do know Max Martin because he's responsible for some of the number one hits, some of the top bangers we have had in the past three decades. I'm just going to leave a list right here, right? I mean, that's insane. And that's just some of them. We're going to be covering a lot of ground, but I just want to let you guys know if you want to do your own deeper dive, I'm going to leave some links in the description box below so you can do your own research, which I suggest that you do. Anyway, let's get to it. Make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to cook up a beat using one of these hit song formulas. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to just get started on something super catchy right away. Okay, something to keep in mind when we're talking formulas or song math is, and this is according to Max, a great pop song should be felt when you hear it. You can hear songs that are technically great, songs that tick all the boxes, but for a song to be felt, you need something else. Something that sticks to you, something that makes you feel, I need to hear that song again. I'm gonna be speaking in terms of production because that's mostly my gang on this channel, but this also works for rappers, singers, and songwriters of any genre. So the first part of the formula is melody. And this should come as no surprise because most of us producers like to start with the melody. We like to start with a loop, a little key part, a little guitar part, however you start. It's usually with the melody. If I'm wrong, if you're one of those people that likes to start with drums, let me know in the comments below. Now, according to Max, even parts that have the same melody and the same lyrics, such as repeated choruses, should never sound exactly the same each time. It's the same melody and all that, says Martin, but what really happens is that energy changes. It's about getting the listener to keep his or her concentration. So what he's talking about here is, let's say you have a flute melody, which a lot of us all love to use on those hooks. You want to change something underneath it so that the energy changes each time with each chorus. So if you have three choruses, by the end you should have like an extra hi-hat, maybe a few snare hits that gives the melody even more energy. So by that third time, you're pumped up even more. So this is for my songwriters out there. Max starts with the melody first, which is kind of opposite to how a lot of my friends or other songwriters that I know do. They like to start with the lyrics first because they think that makes the biggest connection. And yes, it can. But if you approach it like Max, he starts with the melody and comes up with the catchiest thing that you can just sing without any words. And and then you put the words on top and try to make the words fit to the exact syllables and the exact measures of the melody. Another great thing Max does is limits his melodies to three or four per song, introduces them one at a time, and then recycles them on top of each other. I think the main takeaway here is to keep it simple. I have such a problem with this. I'm always trying to put layers and layers and layers and elements and elements and elements in there until there's no room for the vocals anymore. There's no room for the thing that's actually going to drive it. So us producers need to make sure that we're leaving room for the end result, which is someone to rap on top of it or someone to sing on top of it. Let's always be keeping that in mind. Max believes new elements should be introduced into a song one at a time so listeners can get to know each one before they're ready for the next. As he puts it, like in a movie, you can't introduce 10 characters in the first scene. Moving on next, we have rhythm, and this doesn't just apply to the drums, this applies to everything, especially the melody. The way Max puts it, when constructing a melody, it's important to strike balance between the verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. If you've got a verse with a lot of rhythm, you want to pair it with something that doesn't. For example, a section with longer notes so the listeners can take it all in. Or a melody that may not start on the same beat. Sweet and salt might be a description that's easier to grasp. You need balance at all times. So getting back to my beat makers, you can apply this same thought process to your drums. You could have a sparse verse and then pick it up and have even more energy during the pre-chorus and then go back to a more sparse arrangement for the chorus. This is just one idea. Moving on to arrangement, there are tons and tons of information out there on arrangement and I'm sure we're all used to the standard pop formula structure, which looks something like this. 
but how can we go even deeper? A great book that I picked up last year, it's been helping me a lot, is a book called The Addiction Formula by Friedemann Frenensen. I think that's how you say his name. He's a German producer, so I'm probably butchering his name, but I'll leave it in the description as well. He breaks down everything you need to make a really catchy song, and he's done this by analyzing and breaking down tons of number one songs, including a bunch of Max Martin. Right now, he has some great free information on his website. I have no affiliation to him. I just use it a lot, so I wanted to pass that on. It's kind of something that I use in all of my beats and all of my songwriting today, and it's helped me out a bunch. Question of the day, who is your favorite producer for arrangements? I'm always looking for new inspiration. Hook me up in the comment section. So we're gonna be looking at one of his templates that comes in uh, one of the free downloads that I got, and it looks something like this. Okay, so I'm gonna be cooking up a beat, mainly focusing on the drum aspect of this first template. So let's jump right into it. I picked out a melody, a loop, check this one out. So if you look at the top, I went ahead and I made these little markers following exactly what the template shows. So intro, verse, verse continued, pre-chorus, chorus, so on and so on. So you can just kind of go down the line and just follow exactly what it says here. So for the intro, it has nothing. So that's kind of where you would first hear the melody. This is where you get introduced to the first aspect. Yup. Dropping the, the beat, yup. And then let's add our bass and our snare drum. Let's just say like that. Shoot that, that. All the way down the line, snare. Maybe like this, I'm just making this up as we go. We'll do that. First continued, you just put that over, but then we're gonna add our hi-hats. So let's add our hi-hats underneath that. I'm just gonna do straight eighth notes when we introduce the hi-hats, just to keep it simple. Hmm. She got the bone and the model and the me, yeah. She got the pony on the sonny on the shit, yeah. And then we go pre-chorus is gonna be snare rolls. So I'm kind of thinking I want like, what if we did like ta 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 something like that. That's kind of cool. Just copy that all the way over. And then maybe like an extra little snare roll towards the end. Double that. Boom. 
Okay, there we go. So starting off in the beginning. I'm really liking how this is turning out. Let's jump into the next part, which is the hook. This is where the full beat comes in. This is where you can really let it shine right here. But one thing to keep in mind, like I was saying before, is to just keep it simple. You know, like I always want to go frigging off on this part, but what if we just add like an extra snare that comes in? So this is where the chorus hits. I think we should spice up these hi-hats when it comes in, when it drops for the full chorus. snare, spice that up. Okay, next we got the post. So that is gonna be, I like to call that like the re-intro. So everything will drop back out. You can have like an extra little hook on there. That's for the singer, but you can just leave that open. So right in here, it says no drums. Then as the verse comes back on, it kind of repeats the same exact thing. So I'm just gonna fly this over. Bring this. And then maybe we can switch these up switch up the fill. So just a little bit of variation for the fill. Oh wait, I think I gotta move this over. So we got verse, same thing. Bass drum, snare, hi-hat, snare roll, and then back to the full beat, which is right here. Bridge, what do we got? So then when the bridge comes in, it's just the snare. So let's fly this one over. Actually, let's use the simpler 
we'll use the verse beat and then we'll mute these. So mute that and then full beat comes back in. And then the last four bars of the bridge is nothing. And then the chorus comes back in. Maybe we could have the hi-hats for the chorus. Full beat. Oh yes, yeah, full beat. So it continues for the bridge. Duplicate that. And then first chorus back in. The last chorus is nothing. Pre-chorus is nothing. And then full beat, there you go. I'm loving how this beat turned out. I can't believe it turned out so sick. All I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna mix and master it and then I'm gonna leave it at the end of the video so you guys can check out the whole thing. If you guys found this video helpful, drop a like. Let's link up at Aloha Alex on Instagram. I got a bunch of free sound packs coming out that I wanna give to all you guys. It's some guitar loops, some ukulele loops, some tropical stuff you guys can use on your next banger. I'll see you guys.